team of dancers. Please give it up. What is physics? Most people would just say that it's hard and boring, right? But physics is a framework that helps us understand how we interact with everything around us. It describes the rules that govern the universe. And not just the rules for us, but for everything else, too. Oh, there are all these particles that go whizzing by, around, and through us, and they make up everything that we know of. Protons, neutrons, which are made of smaller things called quarks, by the way, electrons, neutrinos, everything we interact with is made of these. They make up the moons orbiting planets, the planets orbiting stars, the galaxies themselves. Physics describes the physical laws that tell these particles how to move and interact with each other. Motion, energy, dynamics of the universe, all are described by physics. Now, some things are described better than others, like we can't quite tell why some people have a less attractive force than others. Oh, back to my story. If we're talking about a moon orbiting a planet, physics can tell us how fast that moon should be going. And if an incoming chunk of space rock would get gravitationally captured by the planet or just walk on by. What matters is its speed. If it's going too fast, the planet can't grab onto it. If it's going more slowly, the planet simply grabs it like a butterfly to add to its collection. So why does the rock succumb to the greedy desires of the planet? It's because of the gravitational force between them, forcing the rock to change its motion, preventing it from going on its blissful, naive way through the bright, shiny forest of the universe. See, that's what forces do. They force you to do things whether you want to or not. And physics tells you why. This brings us to a hallmark of physics, Newton's three laws of motion. Law number one. An object will keep doing what it's doing, whether it's standing still or moving with constant speed and direction, unless acted on by an outside force. Basically, status quo. Law number two. If an object experiences an overall unbalanced force, it'll be forced to change its motion. How much depends on how much mass it has. The bigger it is, the harder it is to move. The more mass it has, the more it resists the change. Think of it this way. The more of a pushover you are, the more you'll be forced to do things. Law number three. Three! Probably the most quoted one. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So this means that if I push on something, that something pushes on me with the same force. But the resulting motion depends on the mass. Let's go back to the space rock and the planet. Yeah. Yes, let's get over there. Both the rock and the planet exert the same gravitational force on each other. So why does the rock move around the planet and not the other way around? The rock has less mass, and its motion is much greater. Its change in motion is much greater. It's the same reason why Earth goes around the sun and not the other way around. Oh shoot, I'm really sorry, I forgot to check. Are there any geocentric believers in the audience who think that the sun goes around the earth? Sorry, oh well. No, 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 oh, El Copernicus, am I right? Yeah! El Copernicus! Oh, El Copernicus! Oh, El Copernicus! Oh, El Copernicus! Now, usually when you think of forces, you think of a, a physical push or a pull some kind of physical contact, right? Because you are human, and that's what we do. And yes, I said we. Contrary to popular belief, physicists are human too. I know, right? Crazy. We're not all robots or number-crunching zombies. Well, not all of us, anyway. Even though there's all this math involved in physics, we still have to deal with things in, how, in terms of how we work and process information. Um, for a lot of forces, that's easy, but for gravity, you might notice it doesn't work that way. 
Earth doesn't have to reach up and grab us to pull us back down. Unless you're an episode of The Walking Dead, or there's some parallel universe with zombie gravity. Forces that interact without touching are called field forces. Basically, they set up a field or a game board that determines what the pieces on it can do. Like that piece right there. And like that piece over there. And like these ones all up here. By the way, gravity is only an attractive force. There's no such thing as gravitational repulsion, no matter what science fiction writers want you to think. But if you bring in electricity and magnetism, then you can have repulsion. And as the saying goes, likes repel and opposites attract. But, not right now. Could you please come to the later? Even though field forces act this way, we interact with a physical push or a pull. But wouldn't it be great if we could act like field forces? Like with some Harry Potter type magic? Or like the X-Men. Okay, well, there's a force in Star Wars, too. Okay, so, since we can't do that, what's a physicist to do? We still have to describe things in terms that make sense to us. For these field forces, we say objects exchange virtual particles to communicate. Basically, we say that, well, there is still some kind of physical interaction going on. One object sends a messenger to tell the other one what to do. It's like there's a bunch of Harry Potter owls that are flying back and forth delivering messages, saying, hey, get over here, or no, get away from me. Richard Feynman even wrote up fancy flight schematics for these owls. Now, these virtual particles aren't real, they're imaginary. They're figments of physicist's imagination that don't exist once the communication is done. It's kind of like those letters that self-destruct when you read them, that the CIA would love and the NSA would hate. These virtual particles are ethereal versions of real particles that all have similar qualities and get the general label of boson. For gravity, it's called a graviton. For electricity and magnetism, it's the photon. There's also the W plus, and the W minus, and, and the Z. I know, physicists can be creative, right? But, 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 the gluon, the gluon is a really fun name for a particle, a very fun creative name, because it actually describes what the particle does. Gluons are the glue that hold quarks together inside protons and neutrons in an atom. And you'll never find a quark by itself in nature. Never. Ever. In fact, if you try to pry two quarks apart to make them separated, the gluons will keep pulling them tighter and tighter, like a big rubber band, until eventually the rubber band will break. And their energy is so intense in that breaking, that snapping of the rubber band, that two new quarks are made that last themselves right back on to those original quarks. Is, is there some other boson that I'm forgetting that maybe you've heard of? Higgs! What, what was that? Higgs! The Higgs! Isn't it so awesome that they found the Higgs, right? Three cheers for the Higgs! Higgs! What is the Higgs? And what's it to do with all of this? It turns out that the Higgs has everything to do with communication. See, the Higgs field that's associated with the Higgs bosons is everywhere in space. And different particles interact with the Higgs field differently. For some particles, the Higgs field doesn't care about them. It ignores them. How terrible is that, poor particles? Other particles interact a bit more. They get a bit more attention as they go through the Higgs field. So what's the difference? What happens here? It turns out that the amount of interaction 
actually corresponds to the amount of mass a particle has. The more mass, the more the interaction. It really is matching up like that. A photon will just go zooming by through the Higgs field. It has no mass. Something else, like an electron or a proton, has more mass. It can't just go through the Higgs field willy-nilly. It actually has to get slowed down by what's going on. See, the more interaction with the Higgs field, the more mass the particle has. The Higgs field translates this for us. See, even the fundamental particles know that communication is important. So, we're humans, right? And we need to humanize the world around us. Some might call this anthropomorphize the world. Physicists are no different. And we need to talk about forces and things like that in human terms. And sadly, we're just muggles without the male-carrying owls. Forces are everywhere. Whether it's a push from some other thirst attendee, a pull from a date who wants to get out of here, or, um, you know, grab you and they should spill your drink. Forces are everywhere and force you to do things you don't want to do, or maybe you might, and physics tells you why. So I want to introduce these guys, by the way. This is Beverly Diaz. This is Boris Willis, who's the director of Boris Willis Moves. Sveta Kutakova. Amanda Leighton White, who's the director of the Groundwork Dance Ensemble. And Chris Richardson. And then, special shout outs to Tommy Liberto and Neil Lavin to be the extra part of it. Thank you guys very much.